Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is, we are so glad you are here. I'm the Reverend Cheryl Butler, and this is Journey Road Ministries, where we seek to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God. Today is June 23rd, 2024, the 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time. And apologize if the video is not so good today. One of my lights just went out. So uh, hopefully the audio will be doing well. But rather than read the gospel text today, I have a video that tells the story. Yes. 
Well, I'd like to start by reflecting on three points we can glean from this story. First point is that in Mark 4, 35 to 36, we read, that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. Here we see Jesus leading his disciples into a boat, symbolizing the journey of life. Just as the disciples faced a literal storm on the sea, we too encounter storms in our lives, challenges, uncertainties, and trials that shake our faith. The second point is trusting in God's sovereignty. So continuing in Mark 4, 37-39, we find the disciples in the midst of a fierce storm with waves crashing over the boat, yet Jesus was with them, sleeping peacefully. The disciples, fearful and lacking faith, woke up saying, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Jesus then calmed the storm and rebuked their lack of faith. This passage reminds us that even in the chaos of life, we can trust in God's sovereignty. Just as Jesus had the power over the storm, he has power over our circumstances. And the third point is strengthening our faith. In Mark 4, 40 through 41, Jesus asks his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? After calming the storm, the disciples were amazed and asked one another, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Through this interaction, Jesus challenges us to examine our own faith. Do we trust God in all circumstances, or do we allow fear to overshadow our belief? Strengthening our faith requires surrendering and control and placing our trust fully in God. Well, what does our faith look like in our lived experiences? My father was a great example of faith for me. He once asked me if I knew why he never worried about his kids. I, well, my mom worried enough for both of them, but he said it was because he knew there was a divine power taking care of us. I often wish I had my father's faith. I still find myself worrying about my kids and grandkids. We have had some literal storms to deal with lately here in Iowa. We were driving back from Des Moines in late April when I knew there was a forecast for possible tornadoes. I kept trying to get an Omaha radio station to check the weather. And finally, when we were just east of Atlantic, I got a station and the announcer was saying, these radio stations are affiliated with the emergency broadcast network. And I thought, uh-oh, this is not good. Somehow, though, my dad's faith kicked in, and though I was concerned, I felt calm and protected. My daughter called about this time because she knew we had gone to Des Moines and was concerned. I guess that worry goes both ways. She told me there, was, there were tornado sightings all around Omaha. So I was coming up on Atlantic, Iowa, which is about 60 miles east, and the car took that exit. So we drove south to Atlantic and returned to Glenwood from the south. It was as if God had created a safe tunnel for us, bringing to mind the image of Moses parting the sea. We had storms to the east and storms to the west, but all we experienced was a light rain. I'm sure all of you have had similar stories of God's protection. It may not have been a literal storm. It could have been some challenge or trial, financial or health-wise. But while we love to acknowledge the times when God's presence and grace is obvious, too often we don't want to think about the times we can't see God's presence or wrestle with the existential questions. So Back to our April storm experience. It was easy for us to feel God's grace and protection 
If we had continued on I-80, we would have been at the Minden exit about the time the tornado destroyed half the town. And if that wasn't bad enough, they were hit by another tornado a couple of weeks later. And a large part of Greenfield, Iowa, was damaged by a tornado in May, and several people lost their lives in that one. So did these people have less faith, or did God care about them less? We often look to the Bible for comfort during crisis. And I have often found comfort from the Bible during dark times in my life. But too often the Bible has been used to rationalize the worst atrocities, such as persecution of heretics, oppression of women, practice of religious intolerance, the divine right of kings against democratic freedoms, the institution of slavery, victim of victimization of homosexuals, cruelty to animals, suppression of civil rights, white supremacy, book burning and censorship, racism, genocide, objectification of unbelievers, opposition to scientific progress, the burning of witches, insurrection, violence and war, and the state's enforcement of the Christian religion on the whole of society. Is it any wonder that people have been leaving the Christian churches? Well, sometimes I have to wonder if Jesus is taking too long of a nap. When will he wake up and calm the storms? We have many storms in our world today that are not weather. Political differences, gun violence, poverty, racism, transphobia, wars to name a few, and humankind's inhumanity to humankind in general. So how does this story help in calming these storms? Well, first, the Bible is not a rule book or text for quick and easy answers. That's not to say that one couldn't find values, ethics, or wisdom in the Bible that could be applied in politics and personal finances, but that these cannot be used to ratify the religion, right religion or political party with divine authority. It is our responsibility to read the Bible and discerning what is God's will and what is not. A good rule of measure is the commandment that Jesus said was the greatest, to love God and to love our neighbor. Of course, this raises a question, who is my neighbor? To which Jesus responds with the story of the Good Samaritan in verse 30, Luke 10, verse 34. And then to make things more difficult, Jesus commands us to love our enemy in Luke 5, verse 44. Loving our enemy seems to be the hardest for all, regardless of the depth of one's faith. So how are we to act in the world? Jesus is our example. And the story we heard today, Jesus was asleep, but awoke when called and he quieted the storm. This is what we are to do. Have a faith in God, that God is always with us, caring for us, no matter the storm. We can rest in that faith. We don't have to be stressed about the state of the world. We can and should take naps. Self-care is important. But when we see a storm, we are called to action. All of those atrocities cited have been opposed and many stopped by good people of faith taking action. And when we consider climate change, we can even make changes to calm the literal storms. So as we conclude our reflections on Jesus took naps, let us remember that faith is not just a concept, but a lived experience. Trusting God means surrendering our fears and doubts, knowing that God is always with us, guiding us through life storms. May we find peace in God's presence, strength and promises. And remember, Jesus took naps.
but he also calmed the storm. So be like Jesus. Amen.